Hello. Not a rear. Oh, welcome back to Path of Exile. We have arrived at Act 4, Merciless Difficulty. After a uh, slightly too early attempt at doing Labyrinth. Well, you live, you learn. And a interesting fight with Dominus. So Act 4 is where I expect things to start to get uh, interesting, slash difficult, slash challenging. <coughs> I'll pick any of the above. But we'll see when that happens. Let's see. Ooh, fractured. <coughs> we get some blues uh, up there. That's not actually what we want. At least we don't want to get hugged by those vultures. And we can just blast them to bits with a group attack. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Saints Hoburg, that's the level 67 Paladin armor. So we're getting the we're getting the good stuff. Vow rape here, that's also a level 66 item. Might actually get to the point where I only want to start showing good versions of those. Tarnished coat, oh, see that's level 62. It's, uh, oh, it's a better base item than the sleek coat I'm currently wearing, but there is still an upgrade above it. So I have been contemplating when to do the actual item upgrade for this uh, for this character. And on the one hand, uh, I'm looking forward to actually pimping this character and just see how, how far I can push it. I, mean, I currently got uh, 10 chaos in my currency tab. Uh, oh, just, just from what I found while leveling and I, I've, I've managed to apply the chaos recipe once now uh, to get two chaos herbs. But oh, I'm, I'm curious to see what I can get for my uh, for my for my orbs. And just how far you can push a character on, on basically while shopping still on a budget. I mean 10 chaos at this point is pretty doable. It's, uh, I don't think it, it, it counts as a lot of money. Especially because I don't I don't trade, I only buy stuff, I don't sell stuff. So I don't make money from trading, I only spend money while trading. Um, but it does mean that, that you know, if I find a very nice base uh, ring, for example, or a belt, then... No, if it's rare, I'll, I'll ID it with the idea of using it, but I won't chaos spam it to see if I if I you know, accidentally get a better one. I, I did that in the past. Um, well, while I played just solo self-found, I used all my chaos orbs to reroll my rings. That that's and then sometimes belts, but and then usually I didn't have any chaos remaining for my other gear. So that's basically a good indication of why chaos spamming. It, it might not always be the best uh, idea. Uh, freezes me, so ac activate our movement potion, so we are in freeze immune. It's so nice having it. But now that I'm you know, reserving my chaos for trade, that means I'll actually have some rather than using it. And then usually for one or two chaos, you can find a very good item that otherwise you probably would have spent over 10 chaos trying to roll and still not having it in a guaranteed fashion. So trade is just a way to use your currency more efficiently. That said, I currently have a life pool that's close to 6000 hit points. I have a DPS, single target DPS of no, five and a half thousand and it pushes to seven and a half pretty rapidly uh, once I'm fully charged up. So here. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Here, have a taste of my skeletons. So I'm actually wondering how far I can push this character without um, really pushing uh, the trade, without pimping the gear. Because that's also an option, you know, seeing if we can postpone gear upgrades as far as possible. And just see where we can get. Most of this gear I've been carrying around since, since Cruel Difficulty. Um, 
So it is by by no means very powerful. That said, no, my, my effective HP pool is pretty good. I'm noticing that my, my evasion rating at 40% is a bit on the low end. That That's one thing that, that hasn't scaled very well. Um, but it's also because I'm not strongly scaling it in the skill tree. I'm really strongly focused on energy shield, which is why it, it has reached pretty ludicrous numbers. But evasion I haven't scaled just yet. Oh, hello there, yellow. And you are gone with all your buddies. I'm not quite sorry to see you go. So one thing I, I am actually contemplating trying is to just stick with the gear that I got. If I find some rare up rares that are upgrades, I'll use those. But I'm not going to trade for anything just yet. I'm just going to save my currency. And see if we can defeat the, the bosses in Act 4. So that's going to be King Kaum, that's going to be Dresso, that's going to be Malakai. Uh, we already tried the, the Labyrinth while underleveled. That was uh, tricky. More or less, I, I died. It wasn't an insta-kill, I did review the, the footage. I lost about half my energy shield. I think I had 1500 energy shield remaining, plus 2000 life. So it was over 3500 points of damage that still that I took in a single charge. I don't have any physical damage medication, so that might be something that that's going to be worthwhile to investigate. Um, now I'll just put everything in the sorting bin. And then we can just move on. So, physical damage is tricky. I could start running with Arctic Armor again. It's got to be 25% energy reserved. But it does mean some uh, physical damage mitigation from that. Also, it's, it's even more fire damage mitigation. Which, via uh, Colton Souls, 20% dire uh, fire damage taken as cold damage. Means I have a, uh, a slight... Uh, bonus there as well. So I'll be pretty strong at tanking fire, uh, but the other damage types are not going to be imbalanced. So eventually you want to, oh, you want to have it balanced. Yeah, 67 area still. So another way, of course, to uh, scale your physical damage mitigation is uh, fortifying, which requires you use some form of melee attack with a uh, melee weapon in order to, to apply it. Uh, I can't use the whirling blades because I'm not using a bladed weapon, I'm using a mace. So that, that's out of the question. Now you could... Uh, I wonder if you can put Fortify on the trigger skill. Um, something in the back of my mind tells me that, that I might have read that that's not an option, but there's so many weird interactions between skills that it's something you just want to try rather than relying on something you vaguely remember. Uh, but now something like a, a, uh, a trigger tree post, for example might be uh, a way to, to keep it up. Though of course that means I need to be hit in melee range and actually block it in order for it to, uh, to apply. So that, that's going to be uh, less useful. Uh, alternatively, you, know, you got that Vengeance, which has a 30% chance to when you get hit rather than when you block. My block is 29% chance, so no. that that's doesn't really matter. One is an AOE, one is a single target skill. Alternatively, how we can just leave fortify for the meleers and not pretend like we're a meleer, because we're, we're not. Ah, it's hexproof, that's why my uh, curse doesn't stick. But then we have endurance charges, which are something that as a shadow, it's 
load the, and the, the charge type that I have the least affinity with. It, it's most difficult to, to generate. I don't have anything in a passive tree that, that supports endurance charges, so that, that's just going to be tricky. Or alternatively, I can just no, suck it up and get more energy shield. If I have a large enough pool of energy shield, then I can deal with the odd hit. And evasion is basically a way to deal with uh, physical damage. It, it's not helping you deal with getting one shot. So hex forms, please, cut it off. No, it doesn't help you deal with getting one shot. It just provides you a small chance of not getting one shot. And the more uh, evasion you have, the bigger the chance of not getting one shot. But given enough attempts at one-shotting you, eventually you will get one shot. That's where armor-based builds have a bit of an advantage because they just diminish the size of those hits, therefore allowing them to, to tank more of them. But the thing is, usually armor builds don't have evasion and therefore they are forced to tank all of them. Unless they block or stuff like that. So, oh, there, there is there is balance between things. Just have to uh, pay attention to it. Also, there's a, a very comfy amount of rares here. I've forgotten just how many rares there, how many, uh, how good the spawns are in in Muslis. Uh, Act four. Which is so oh, once you if you play in a normal difficulty, you you get way less monsters, you get way less rare spawns. The way the, the game is, is way easier, but also less less dancing, less rewarding. This is definitely good. Something is trying to shoot me here. Also, of course, currently I'm, I'm still not a crit build. Um, that's after we get another 10% uh, chance to freeze and freeze duration and such up. We're gonna morph into our uh, crit state. That's gonna be pretty cool. Hey, Nightwing, I didn't see you because of all the flames. Very edgy. Okay, so Vol's not here, that means he's probably over there. Ah. So, yeah, just, just some, some random musings. I think Arctic Armor is at least one way we can get some physical damage mitigation on us. It, it's one of the few ways we can guarantee it for ourselves. So, hope that that's a thing. Other than that, we have to put effort into it. Uh, walking around with a granite flask might help. Gives you 3000 armor, which well, helps you deal a little bit with armor, but against big one-shotting uh, hits, A, you have to remember to actually hit the potion. And B, you don't really have a lot of scaling on it. And 3000 armor against a you know, 3500 points damage or 4000 points damage hit does not really um, impact it all that much. It, it might be like a 10% damage uh, mitigation, if that. So it's on par with uh, Arctic armor and you have to remember to actually use it. So let's, uh, let's double check. We got all the things over here. We got all the things over there. We have our frenzy charges up. So then, Fingers of Frost is going to be our next uh, goal. And so the moment we have done the Labyrinth, we can hopefully refund these three nodes. And then we can just boost towards Fingers, fingers of Frost. After that, I'm going to grab Doomcast via the, the, the small side. So we're just going to boost our crit chance. And this gives us a little bit of crit multiplier. After Doomcast, we are going to grab Annihilation, again via the, the very efficient inner route. Together, these will boost our crit chance by uh, over 200% if I remember uh, my numbers correctly. So that means that our right ma mouse button, fingers of frost, currently it has a crit chance of 13.5% from a base... Um, 6.7% I, if I remember correctly. 
So that's going to be quadrupled, so 6.7. It's going to be somewhere in the 25% range. Basically, we're just going to double what we have. Which is pretty nice, since it does stack with all the other uh, chance to freeze. Just need a moment to catch my breath. So, part of the time things will get frozen just because they got frozen, and part of the time things will get critted just because they uh, will get frozen because they got critted. Also, here I have some skeletons because, well, I am so nice that way. I, I want to share my army. No, he's a he's an army commander. I'm an army commander. Oh. Uh, well. I think I have to uh, eat my words there. I'm no longer an army commander. I only have five skeletons remaining. Yeah. Good, good, good. Good thing is, so I'm keeping my distance. Fall is very, very manageable. If you just keep your cool, keep your distance. Oh, he actually charged my golem this time. Or something. I don't know. Why is he charging off to where my golem doesn't seem to be? But well, I'm not gonna complain too much about that. Okay, this is three by two. We have the space theoretically, but not in practice. Okay, you midnight blade. You are not a banner. So you will go. And that is that. So I'll just put everything again in the, in the stash. No, there, there's hardly any interesting items that that drop. So no point in uh, in showcasing everything. Let's see, just drop a couple of these, and then we unseal uh, the mountain. And all the rewards are just items I don't really really care about. So we might as well. Just jump in. This is probably going to be a bit, a bit longer episode than usual. Since I don't think we can do the, the mines in 10 minutes. But felt a bit weird to leave this as a very short episode. Someone is doing chaos damage to me. Stop doing that, you chaos sentinel, you. Oh yeah, one of the things I have been thinking about, I actually did, did some, uh, some playing around in the skill tree builder, is turning this into a CI build. A chaos inoculation builds. So with CI you reduce your life to one and you become chaos immune. So that means there will never ever be damage penetrating your energy shield. Downside is that your energy shield is all you have. So in my case if I manage to increase my energy shields by 2000 points then giving up my uh, my life for that would be a oh a sideways trade off so to say there's no 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 advantage no disadvantage because my effective life pool stays roughly the same size. That said, oh, stop trying to murder me. Also, go. You stop digging up things, yes, thank you. But no, there's a, a couple of uh, notes behind the uh, Chaos Inoculation uh, passive on the skill tree. That uh, one of them increases your energy shield by 15% on top of everything else. It's a more multiplier modifier rather than an increased multi multiplier. So it's, it's pretty darn strong as a, as a modifier. So that is something to hope that is worth considering. Then no, you don't have to care about uh, chaos. Then your chaos resistance is completely optional. You don't have to care about chaos resistance on your gear, and that's something that now I want to fix with my gear upgrades. Otherwise, so it becomes easier to acquire gear or trade gear or craft gear because there's one less resistance to worry about. And no, because I'm already in this side of the tree. No taking chaos inoculation and then uh, going for infused shield afterwards. It's pretty okay, especially now I'm already here, so just, just one, two, three, four, five points to get this entire branch. 
Now if you go CI, you probably also want to get Essence Search just to get a little bit faster uh, recharge. Ooh, this is uh, a elemental reflector. But I dealt with him. But oh, CI seems to be a viable option. If I look at my current energy shield and realize that most of it is just mediocre items found in, uh, in, in the middle of Krull and, and one of the items, my, my hat, well, my hat and my body armor are from, from later in, in, in Krull. It's very easy to see how with proper gear upgrades we can push seven or eight thousand energy shields. And then giving up your life doesn't seem so bad. Also a good thing is, is if you don't have life, there is no more need for life flasks. Also because you're immune for chaos, that means poison doesn't do anything on you because poison is chaos damage over time. So that's one less thing that you have to fix with flasks. Meaning you can uh, dedicate your flasks to other things. Basically you can run around with utility flasks. I mean I already switched to my uh, mana flask to a, a hyper flask just to see if it's uh, how that works out. Uh, with the idea that I can just regenerate some life while regenerating my mana and therefore keep the curse immunity up a bit longer as, uh, as needed. The downside is that hyper flas uh, flasks have less charges. That's something that I... I um, I'm, I'm starting to feel I only have two sips rather than three sips and that is not enough. Oh, but if you're CI then you can just go pure mana flasks or better if you just have a mana stable build then you don't need mana flasks at all. And then you can go pure utility flasks. And then you can get a, like a ruby flask and a, a sapphire flask and those things. Um, you can carry around more sulfur flasks, silver flasks, granite flasks, basalt flasks. Oh, basalt flask is also uh, a new one, right? That that just has a flat out 10% physical damage mitigation. So granite plus basalt means 3000 armor and 10% physical damage mitigated on top of that. If you combine that with arctic armor, you get another 10-12% uh, physical damage mitigation. So there are definitely options. So that way you can obtain about 30%, maybe 40% physical damage mitigation. Which might be the difference between dying and living. And if you have a larger energy shield pool, then you might be able to take two hits that were, would otherwise be lethal. Just because of the mitigation factor. Having higher evasion will also help, of course. Well, if they're, if you're not getting hit, then you don't have to take the tank the damage. I'm seeing if I can push my 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 evasion maybe to like 60% rather than 40%. That that seems like it. It will probably make a, quite a big difference. Because now I'm getting hit 60% of the time, then I would get hit 40% of the time. So that's so a one third decrease in times that you get hit, therefore in damage that you have to take. Um, of course I could also switch back to uh, Enfeeble or maybe uh, figure out some way to uh, go dual curse. Um, I mentioned before, no, oh, there's items, there's uh, Daedri's Damning a Ring, there's uh, a Health Cream I believe, boots, uh, they're pure armor boots. Um, something else that I overlooked is there's Whispers of Doom, that, that I'm close to it. No, I'm already here for the unnatural calm. So it's one, two, three, four points and you get some increased uh, curse speed stuff on top. But Whispers of Doom might be an option as well. No sacrifice, uh, maybe some, 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 uh, some other nodes in order to get it. And then you can run Enfeeble, for example. And no, Enfeeble, enemies deal 28% less damage. No, there's no need to do physical damage mitigation if you just make the opponent deal less damage. Then you don't have to take less damage because they already deal less. And that just entirely factors into the other, uh, in, into the rest of the calculations. 
with armor and, and other forms of mitigation. It all stacks in, in interesting ways. Hello there, Hammerstone. So, I just wanna oh, not get hit by those hammers too much. Keep the frost bolts up. I'm staying in range just so my uh, aura, my frostbite aura, affects him, so he's easier to uh, damage. Also, he hurts quite a bit, actually. Okay, I resummon the golem because it was nearly dead. We freed uh, the ghost. Let's see if we can find uh, the exits. We're lucky to actually find it. Uh, usually you have to backtrack in this level in order to actually find her. At least I'm more lucky finding the exits than the threat. A little silk rope, 65, lots of energy shields. And that's just unmodded. <laughs> So, yeah, no, there, there's always interesting trade-offs to make, and that, that's that's one of the one of the things that does keep me interested in the game. There is never a right answer. There's never one item to equip or one one build to play or, or one option. There's always so many options, and there's never a a best choice. There's always trade-offs. It's like, yeah, what do you value more? How do you want to tackle the problem? Well, there's five ways to tackle the problem. Which one do you prefer? Or what trade-offs do you want to make? What do you want to sacrifice in order to gain something? So in my case, no part of my defensive strategy is just freezing things. If they freeze, they don't do damage to me. If they don't do damage to me, I don't have to tank it. It's that simple. And game stuff, I suppose. Oh uh, wait, it's highlighted because it is a uh, prophecy. Uh, prophecies are a new type of item, so yeah. Let's see. Got a pack of magical monsters. Sure, Ooh, that's a lot of them. Nice. Still exploding a couple of vortices in there as well. Oh, they're doing damage to me. Yeah. I'm I'm on fire with magical fire. And they didn't really have the decency to drop any good loot. Bugger. Crystal veins, very excellent. Earthquake. Again. Oh, no, we're merciless. We're not surprised by that anymore. What's down? So yeah, well after we after this episode, next episode we're gonna do a run of uh, King Calm and uh, De Resso. Well, start with Calm and see how long that takes, and depending on the time, we might do De Resso as well. Um, yeah, as I said, we're gonna gonna see how far I can push myself with this build, uh, or more importantly, how far I can push the current set of gear. Because at this point, my gear is so far behind that it is the limiting factor. But it's also what makes it interesting. And, uh, and I have had fully self-found characters that were less tanky and less well-equipped than I currently am. My Essence Drain, Contagion, Shadow had less uh, life and energy shield combined. I think I had him, had him at about 3,800 combined at this point, rather than 6,000. So I am 50% more tanky. And I, of course, now have the freezing factor, which that one didn't have. But that was a, a chaos thing there. Instantly you notice it on your life, since it actually moves. <laughs> which is funny. Oh. So some fortresses just to uh, set up a little bit of a defensive uh, area. So 
So most of the time you're, you're just spamming your AoE and then you follow up with just the individual high damage frost balls to kill the, the targets. Hello, Ian Grafer. You killed my golem. Then I'll summon my army. Though he is a cycloner, that might not be the best of ideas, but well, it worked. At least, time for vengeance. You will die. So Vortex is, has been relegated to a uh, not tertiary skill, I suppose. It's uh, oh, it, it, it slows things down, it, it guarantees the chilled state. So it, it's more of a control skill. It, it's, it's almost like a, a bit of an aura with some damage over time component. It's a, it's a personal self-defense skill. You know, just for swatting things off of yourself. So the build definitely has, has morphed into more of a frostbolt with a vortex build. But, oh, you could change things around as well and use Frostbolt as only a vehicle to deliver vortices and really focus on, on vortices and you know, scaling their damage over time and things like that. So There are more ways to play even just this skill combination, which again makes things interesting. Hello there, Burning Man. Somewhere in here. Yes, you. Let's see, let's uh, enfeeble you so you do less damage to my golem. And then we'll just burn you off of the face of the planet. Or something. Ah. We get a Quicksilver Flask. Yay! Uh, murder mids, Terror Claw. Oh, make, wake me up when I've got a four socket murder mids. And we are here. Have a chat with Lady Diala. Then have a chat with the, the ruling ladies in town. And then have a chat with Tassuni. Actually, let's have a chat with Tassuni first for the skill book. Oh, we need more space. Can we Tetris this? Yeah, we can Tetris this. Inventory Tetris. So I, I thought I would be able to Tetris this. Yes. Ta-da! So, another skill point. Another step on the way to Fingers of Frost. So that is all the skill points we're going to get from NPCs. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go couple tool. Just because it's intelligence aligned, it might be useful. 1% extra block chance with shields, extra physical damage with bonds, strength, minions have 10% to all elemental resistances. But, but all over the place and I'm not using my wand, so that definitely doesn't help. Uh, I only have one minion, of course, that's my golem. Making the golem a bit tankier, not a bad idea, but on the other hand, not worth a jewel slot. At least not, not to me, can I can just easily recast uh, it. But that's going to be it for this episode. We made some pretty darn good progress. Dried Lake, Pines, uh, the whole shebang. And we are now here. Ready to kill two kings, then Malachi. And we still have a labyrinth to run at some point. So for now, thank you for watching. And I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.